Yes. So, <clears throat> although do, we don't have a recording, but we do know what all we studied. We studied about, we were talking about uh, precision and accuracy, if you remember, right? Precision is, accuracy is generally defined. That was the fag end of our class. So, when we were talking about precision, uh, we said that if you are, the data that you are getting are all having very small range of difference amongst themselves and the data are not, see precision question comes when you don't know what is the final result you are supposed to get. But the results that you are getting, they are always around the same observed data. We call your, your, your measurement is very, very precise. That means there's a high level precision is there in your measurement. It means, say suppose we use certain instruments, say suppose you use the stopwatch to record every time that the normal clock is running or something is happening. Say a toy is moving in this way, uniform velocity or uniform speed and you are recording what is the time taken. So every time you are using your stopwatch, your data is coming, all data are very close to each other. You don't have much variation within the observed data. In such a case, we say that your uh, systems, measurement systems are very good. Whether you reach the correct thing or not, that we don't know. See, try to understand. You may be procedurally wrong while doing the experiment. But every time you are using any measuring device, your device is measuring very correctly, but you are doing it in a wrong manner. So precision means when our data have very small range of difference between them, we say it's precise. Just like when the arrows were allowed to be hit on the bullseye chart, you are hitting on the sixth circle, but all the arrows are hitting at the same point. Yes, that's called a precise hit. Accuracy comes when the end result is known to you. Say, for example, we are calculating acceleration due to gravity. The value of it is 9.8. We know it. And you are doing various uh, setup of, uh, you know, various experimental setups to get that value. And you are getting your values as 9.8, 9.81, 9.80, 9.802. Now you are both accurate and precise. And suppose you are getting something like 5.6, 5.6, 5.63, 5.64 not accurate but you are precise and suppose you are getting 9.8 next answer is 17.2 you are neither accurate nor you are precise that sort of measurement we cannot depend upon is accurate and pre precise thing clear to you accuracy comes when the target is known to you and you are bang on target every time you are bang on target then you are accurate as well as precise and every time you hit here there are some children who have got vision, some problem, distortion in vision. If you ask them to hit that coin in carom, they'll constantly hit the other one. The hit is precise, but not accurate. Have you got it? Chalo. Today we'll see, study about something called significant figures. This is the only thing that you need to pay attention and is something new for you. Significant figures. What is the meaning of the word significant? Important. Something that has got importance, right? So I go back to my same old example and then we'll do some worksheets also. So let's say, let's say I have a scale out here. All right. I have a scale and my scales graduations are something like this. Okay. Say this was 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, this is 1. Let's say this is the centimeter scale on my particular uh, measuring device. So each division is measuring a millimeter, right? 1 millimeter, 2 millimeter, 10 millis will make 1 centi. I hope you know that. Now, when I am giving you to measure something, you have the length is falling out here. What will you record your observation as possible na? very much possible this happens generally when we are trying to stitch trousers and t-shirts and all tailors do not look for that accuracy but if you are making something like on a watch you are trying to make a small spring this will matter a lot now what will be your observation for this can you tell me what is the measurement let's say you have measured a value x let's say what will be your measured value zero point 7. That's all. But it is more than 0 0.7. Don't you think? 
somebody may say this is 0 0.75 somebody may say this is 0 0.76 somebody may say this is 0 0.762 you can't stop that person are you understanding what i'm trying to say can you tell me what is common in the three measurements what is common in the three measurements 0 0.7 is the thing up to which you are sure about it it is 0 0.7 because our scale measures up to what one millimeter so the last accurate measurement that we will be able to give is up to a millimeter that is one tenth not beyond that but say suppose this was a laser device which measures up to millimeters up to double let's say oh, oh i didn't bring my vernier i should have brought my vernier today so if i bring my vernier my vernier will measure this as 0 0.75 so in that case, I am more sure to the next decimal. Are you getting it? So the surety, that is the conviction or the surety with which you say the measurement is accurate will be up till this particular figure. This is your last significant figure. Anything after that is a blabbering. It may be, it may not be. Have you understood? So now in physics what happens is to understand how significant figures are recognized so there are some rules okay and and that you have to apply while solving problems have you understood what is the importance of significant figures now let's say let's take two numbers let's say i take a number four one three six i take a number zero point seven zero two eight zero point seven three no zero point 0 0.000731 and let's say 41.26 these are some numbers okay we need to talk about significant figures now there are some rules you start writing them in your own language as you find okay now the first rule is in all these look for the first number counting from left to right look for the first number what is the first number here Four. What is the first number here? Seven. What is the first number here? Seven. What is the first number here? Four. Tag this number. Take this example and you can do. Tag this number as your first significant digit. This is your first significant digit. All children, if you have any doubt in this section, do ask her because you will get problems on this. Very easy. But there are chances to goof it up. These are some things which are easy to learn and easy to forget. First significant. Have you understood? Okay, I'll give you time. And if you feel that I'm going fast, stop me. Say that, sir, give us some time. The number that is after this will obviously be its second significant digit. This is its second significant figure. So many children like when I teach some students abroad, they say sick figs. So if you want to do that style, you can also say this is your second sick fig. Understood? Okay. Some rules that we will apply here are any zeros that you see to the left of a number. Hold on. Any zeros that you see to the left of a number are not significant any zeros that you see to the left of a number are not significant which means neither these are this is significant neither is this zero significant neither are these three zeros significant these are not significant okay any zeros that you see zeros to the left of a significant zeros to the left of the first significant digit irrespective of whether there is a decimal or not are not significant okay however if you get a zero between two significant digit this is a sig fig this is a sig fig a zero between two digits is a sig fig And slowly when you do problems, you'll start memorizing. Don't worry. Okay. 
a zero after a decimal after any number are also sig fig these are also sig fig zeros that supersede the decimal part of the numbers these are also sig fig har ek ko example ke sath sath isko chahe teen char bar likho isi ko taki aap clear ho jao and write it in your own sentence i will stop here once and we will revise whatever we learned so far whenever you get a number theek okay? hai let you write it first okay see whenever you get a number first you see whether the number has any decimal or not let's say we got a number 736 does this number have any decimal right now no i could have given you a number like this also this i could have given you a number like this also okay let's see the difference here children this number is three significant figures because this is the first significant this is the second significant this is the third you don't see any zeros here if you would have seen any zeros out here then also they would have been significant now hold on the question sir what happens when you see two zeros out here that will hold on right now this number has got three significant digits right this number has got five significant digits because this is uh, these zeros are after the point see whatever i have written here i am trying to give more examples these zeros are after the point if you see anything after point if there is a point here after that whatever zeros come they are all significant however if your number would have been 0.00432 this is not five significant digits this is three significant digit because what rule you will apply the first number the first number first number significant second significant third significant first significant second significant third fourth fifth what does this show this is a number reported by sahasra it shows sahasra has got a device which can measure 736 and up to two more decimals she got a reading double zero that's a different thing this reading could have been 24 also have you understood this is a reading obtained by our friend kirtan his device records only up to 736 not doesn't go into decimal have you understood how to find significant they will not ask they will ask you some questions initially how many significant figures do you see then the question arises all about the question will be juggling in between zeros and decimal the question will be juggling between zeros and decimal question arises sir if i get a number like 4100 what do i tell about this if you get a number like 4100 we will say that the number has two significant digits two significant because why hold that this thing however if i write 4100 and point four significant digits are you understanding why 4100 is too significant is something your heart is not agreeing right now hold that question okay we'll just hold that question 4100 did you understand two sig figs four sig figs seven sig figs six sig figs clear six sig figs is it clear let's see some more examples now you will be given now to round up that is that, that is the challenge where you have to report an answer in significant figures okay now let's see let's say we did an experiment and we got our figure as 57.136 and they tell us give your answer in three significant digits three significant digits right this is our lab measurement we are to report in three significant digits so let's identify significant digits 
the first number is the leading significant second third fourth let me number it this is my first this is my second this is my third this is my fourth agreed how many significant digits that i did i ask you three sig figs you report your answer three sig figs if they tell you about three sig figs then now start looking at the fourth one and call it as your decider this will be your decider right this will be my decider if this fourth one now there is a difference here how cbsc and cambridge deals it we'll go with the cambridge way first if this fourth one is a number up to four then retain the retain the third digit if this number is five or more than five increase plus one to third digit did you understand now my fourth digit is how much three so i will report my measurement as 57.1 i don't increase this because it is up to four if my number would have been five seven point one five six now what is the decider this is the decider because you have to round up up to three six figs is the fourth one five or more than five yes it is five or more than five so how much do i round it up to one more so i make it 57.2 actually this is also not correct you know what cbsc says in grade 11 that is actually the correct one there they say if it is greater than five then increase by one let's learn both we will use this in cambridge has made it easy if it is greater than five then you increase it by one if it is equal to five then look for the digit beside it if it is odd then we increase it if it is even hold it so here we will increase it 57.2 as per cbsc will do and if it was 57.25 we would have retained it as 572 572 still correct so ultimately you are coming to the cambridge answer only see cambridge says if you are five or more than five increase this cbsc says if you are at five then please hold look into the digit beside five is it odd go up is it even remain what it is so let's see the example this number in cbsc we should have reported it as 57.2 in cambridge also we will report it as 57.2 is there any error no error and let's take 57.256 in cambridge we will report it as 57.3 cbsc will report this as 57.2 and if the number is 57.266 now no tension you are more than 5 so you straight away report it as have you understood right now they tell it that the answer now the question is report it in two sig figs nearest tenth what will you report this value as your measurement came like this report in two sig figs nearest tenth tenth 60 tenth means this digit so this number lies anywhere between 50 to 60 it is lying where 57 points and blah blah so the nearest tenth is this if this number would have been 53.136 what is the nearest tenth 50 uh, we have still not answered that question 4200 you got a number 4200 is was given to you now the question arises should we take it as sig fig 4 or sig fig 2 this is a number given to you do you know about the precision and the accuracy of the device you didn't don't know who knows who knows sahasra that we must have you know rounded it up to the nearest hundreds also it was possible let's say this number was something like 4187 
and if the number was something like so this is 4100 4200 its number was 4233 4200 4300 do you understand where the pain is you reported this like this nearest 100 you don't know whether the number was this or this that's the problem significant figures whenever you have zeros after this unless and until the scenario is specified for you you can't take the catch Kitan, did you understand this problem you don't know whether it was this or this understood and the last thing is about exponential representation let's say something called 5.71 into 10 to the power 24 10 to the power 24 means so many zeros zeros after a decimal we just take if it is an exponential this is the sig fig three sig figs three sig figs this is not well this is not valued are you getting it this is three sig figs the value of mole 6.22 6.022 so mole one mole is a measurement taken like this 6.022 10 to the power 23 sig figs are four sig figs any zero that is between two numbers is accounted is that understood once we do exercises we will discuss every number we will get to know dhruv bol beta koi doubt hai theek hai problem aapko tab aayega when you will be given some number and you will be asked please now rewrite the number in two sig figs or rewrite the number in two sig figs rounded up to so and so at that time you will have little bit of issue but if you remember these rules it will not be an issue and now in the first unit we are left with one small issue that is systematic errors so this chapter more than questions this chapter what will happen in cambridge this chapter will hover around every chapter because you know in cambridge the questions will come like five questions in one question this 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 ci is doing an experiment blah 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 and at last there will be one question how can ci improve our readings give two ways in which CR might have got wrong so those questions are all from this chapter parallax errors do you CR got these readings what can you tell about the instrument of CR CR's instrument gives precise readings CR did a reading for acceleration due to gravity and got this how do you rate these readings they are very accurate precise significant so this chapter will be present in all these experiment type of problems you can't run away from here one more error what are the errors we spoke about we spoke about parallax as an error parallax is a behavioral error that instead of looking at the gauge like this you prefer to look the gauge in this manner that's that's parallax okay parallax now what is the advantage of using analog uh, digital over analog digital will never have any parallax issue the time you see this way or that way this is a digital watch but that one is it 7.25 now or 7.24 minutes some seconds? We don't know based on from which angle we are looking at it, right? There is one more error which is known as systematic error. It looks like an oxymoron. Error and that too systematic. You know the meaning of the word oxymoron? Two different. Systematic error. Okay. Systematic error means errors which are caused due to system systems means the systems that you are using right fine can anyone tell me how long is this ruler in inches this is just double of that ruler that ruler is 12 inch so this is 24 inch that means if i measure say for example from this part to this part and i strike it here it should give me 24 inches if this ruler was correct but you watch the ruler very properly there is a margin here there is a margin here these are called zero errors have you understood so your your ruler is something your scenario is now something like this see you have taken your ruler and your ruler and you are measuring from the ground let's say we are measuring from the ground and your zero starts from here and say you have measured someone till here now this is the ruler measurement where does this part go zero error this will be known as some x so your actual measurement will be whatever height you measured height plus x 
Zero errors are the most common source of errors in labs. Sir, why do you say so? Now look at us. We have studied from government schools and colleges. Okay. So there the devices that used to be given to us, a voltmeter will be given to you or say a galvanometer. A galvanometer initially when you don't connect, the arrow should be at zero. But if you go to all our type of colleges, you will find the arrow is out here. Zero is here, the arrow is here. And then say use this. Deliberately they will make the instrument like this. Now whenever you are measuring something, you should account for this error. We should actually see our, our at that time, suppose the measurement came here. Actually the measurement should have come till here. This value is equal to this value. So this with this measurement, you should add this measurement. Are you getting it? This is called negative zero error. Similarly, you can have devices which have got positive zero error. Means before the start of the experiment, instead of staying here, it is staying here. This much is additional measured. And they say, suppose your device goes till here. So this is your measured and this is your error. So you subtract this error. Understood? Systematic errors. This is the only thing that they'll ask you. Right. So if that be the case, we'll teach you generally see in books, whatever rights is going further, that is not covered in the syllabus. That's for extra read, vernier and screw gauge. So that's not there. Scalar and vector. Now we'll go a little bit into vectors and scalars. Is is measurement fine now? Significant figures and all. We'll do book exercises, then you'll understand a lot. Let's last go to scalars and vectors and that too we will keep our attention on vectors. The thing that you are going to learn now are very simple level vectors. Okay. Now, scalar. A scalar is a quantity which has only magnitude. That means it only has a measurement. So, can you give some example? Time, mass, length, temperature, age. These are all scalars. Do you say the age of Sahasra is so many years north? You got it? Age, mass, time, pressure, energy. So some scalar you can take down. Mass, length, time, pressure, energy, work, voltage. These are all scalar units. We will be talking more in terms of vectors. Right. Scalars are fine. Okay. Let us now go to vectors. Vectors. The best way to understand vectors is by force, is the easiest way to understand. So, how do you represent a vector? A vector is represented in this manner. This is called the head and this is called the tail. The tail tells you where the vector is originating from and the head tells you where the destination of the vector is, right? So, if we say, for example, if we say that this is A and this is B, so my vector is represented as vector AB. Vector AB and vector BA are totally different things. You cannot write vector AB is equal to vector BA because vector BA is this from B to A, B to A. However, something is equal. We write that the magnitude of AB is equal to, is equal to the magnitude of BA. Did you understand this? If this vector is 5 Newton, this vector is also 5 Newton. The only thing is that they are just direction wise opposite. So, in vector language we say AB is equal to negative of BA. In vector language, let us understand it more in a proper manner. Let us say I have a quadrant system and you make Nidhi stand right at origin. And this is one of our friend's house. This is also one of our friend's house. This friend's house is 5 meters. This friend's house is also 5 meters straight. And she is at origin. If she would like to say that this vector OA is positive 5, automatically OB becomes negative 5. Again, please understand, negative does not mean an integer out here. The negative anyway does not show that this distance is less. They are same, they are just in 
opposite direction do you get it negative means opposite direction a force applied on a body from this side is say f then the force applied which is equal to this will be said as negative f because it's coming in the opposite direction is this clear out here in vectors we will need one thing to understand what is resultant of a vector means if two vectors act on a point where is the resultant happening resultant so let's take the let's take the understand the concept of resultant right let's see the concept let's say and with this you can solve any question let's say let's say we have two vectors oa and ob right oa and ob understand what it is it is like this is a point somebody is pulling it this side and somebody is pulling it this side let's not make it equal our interest to know is where will this body move to are you understanding if i give a force this side another force this side the body moves this side but now question is different like you're pulling somebody's hair this side and the ears this side which side will the head go so that is known as resultant of a vector means if these two vectors so what are the vectors acting out here the vectors acting are vector ob and vector oa you need to find out what is the resultant of this and this in vector language we call ob plus oa is equal to what this is not this is not addition by algebra 3 plus 4 is how much beta 7 right now you will see 3 plus 4 will equal to 5 what happened some that's a dragonfly In childhood, we used to actually play to catch this one. How many can anyone catch? And then tie them in a string. Anyways, try to understand. Scalar addition is 3 plus 4 equal to 7. Vector addition, we will see 3 plus 4 will be equal to 5. Right? This is the beauty of vector addition. It is not like adding things. Now, understand. OB is a vector and OA, no matter how the book teaches you, you will understand very clearly in this way. OB, how to understand? There is a coconut, somebody is pulling it with OB. Let us say the value of OB is a 3 Newton force and this is a 4 Newton force. We now need to find out, sir, where will this coconut go? Will in this direction this? Now, how to do it? In vectors, always understand one thing that parallel translation of a vector is always possible although your books will not discuss about it parallel translation means as long as you don't change the direction okay this is one vector you can take it parallelly anywhere that you want anywhere that i want but it should not be parallel translation vector additions are done in a manner in which this is known as the triangle law of addition at your level this is sufficient triangle law so what do we do in triangle law to the tail to the head of one vector the next vector's tail is brought in contact you are doing ob plus oa ob plus oa this is what we want to find out right children are you familiar with your OB vector? Yes. Now, OA, if you see both the vectors are tail to tail, this will not work. The tail of this vector must be brought to the head of this vector. So, we used to say, head say tail mila. I was just singing it like a song, head say tail mila, head say tail mila. So, we milai, we bring our tail. I make it this. This is allowed in vector. This is my A. Have you understood? First step. Head set tail. After that, what do I do? 
join the tail of the previous one with the head of the new one right join the tail of the previous one with the head of the new one this is the resultant vector which is known as oa vector it means under the influence of one force three newton here and four newton here my body will be moving in this direction and what should be the value of this five newton sir how did you find out three four five is a pythagorean triplet just do three square is nine four square 16 25 root of it is 5 in vector it is possible modulus of ob was how much modulus of ob this is known as modulus means value this is called modulus modulus or we call this as mod we read this as mod ob we read it as mod ob this is known as the absolute value so modulus of this was 3 modulus of this was 4 and that gives you 5 now that means the effective force felt by this person's head is a 5 newton force contributed by these two people not 7 5 next question comes what is the direction what is the direction so the direction is given by this angle theta so we call this as this the symbol slowly you'll learn some new things this is called as the Greek word T-H-E-T-A, -E -T -A, theta. We'll say the person feels a force of 5 Newton at an angle theta to the horizontal. Achha. Things will be a little bit hazy. Don't worry. Don't give up. Let's understand what it means. Let's say this was the person's head. What is the overall implication of this? Okay, let's understand the overall implication. Then it will become more clear. Wait. This was 4 Newton. This was 3 Newton. Right? This was how we were pulling his head on both sides. Let's understand what, is, what does resultant mean. If we were to replace both the acting forces, we can replace it with one force of 5 Newton acting at an angle theta. Does this make sense? Two people pulling his head in this manner is same as one person pulling his head in this manner. <laughs> Imagine paratrooper. How does a paratrooper descend? And he is descending particularly downwards. Sometimes you open the zip of your jeans trouser. After opening the button, you just pull it. Your one force is this side, one force is this side. How is the zipper going down? Vertically down. How do we tear clothes? A vector means out here, whenever they are telling you about vectors and all, will because as problems come, we will be able to classify it more nicely. But all you have to know here is that how to find out the resultant of two vectors. So, if this is your force in x direction, if this is your force in y direction, this is your resultant force. You see your resultant force was root under fx square plus fy square. This is what you did. 3 square plus 4 square and at your level you will only get four vectors in this manner in grade 11 onwards you will get them in this angle also two vectors like this how to find now the resultant so there's another law called the parallelogram law but we will also learn that not now now if you learn that it will confuse you is this much clear tell me on vectors are you clear or not you will be given two vectors anytime you have to draw a resultant First, apply the triangle law. What is the triangle law? Take the first vector, 
to the head of the first vector bring the tail of the next vector no sir drawing was given like this no you are allowed to do translations let's take one more example let's say one vector was given in this direction and one vector in this direction let's say this is vector a and this is vector b somebody is asking you find out a plus b a plus b right so we first draw a so this is a now you have to add b to it you are allowed to parallelly translate b b can be parallelly taken anywhere b can be taken here b can be so we bring b here got it then what do we do join the tail of the previous to the head of the initial this is the vector c which is given by a plus b equal to c now try and understand I was pulling the head this way, Sahasra was pulling the head this way, where does the man's head go? The man's head goes this way. Understood? Okay. Let's now open your book. Can I rub this? We now take up some problems from the worksheet. A very easy worksheet, the book worksheet first and let's see if we are able to answer them or not so that you don't take any load back home and then back home I can give you what is called a, uh, a separate worksheet okay let's let's do this so you come to this yellow page on your book which is scalars and vectors once you have done this okay tan you don't know now do you know trigonometry tan tan you don't know so we'll we'll hold it that i have to teach you separately so vector key questions let's leave come to here exam style questions right page number 11 on the book are you there okay let's take the first problem a chocolate bar measures 10 centimeter long by 2 centimeters wide by 2 centimeter thick what is the shape that comes to your mind? Cuboid. Rectangle is a 2D. Beta. Rectangle mein do hi to measurement honge. Ya teen measurement hai. Sasha, I will understand. This is a cuboid. Nidhi, whatever we did in grade 8. Checkpoint. This is cuboid. Calculate the volume of one bar. Chalo calculate karo. And you are allowed to use your calculators. Huh? Please have the habit because Cambridge allows you calculator. How much uh, Sasra? 40. 40 answer is wrong. 40 centimeter cube is the correct answer or 40 cubic centimeter. question. How many bars each 2 centimeter long, 2 centimeter wide and 2 centimeter thick have the same total volume? So first find out the volume of one little bar and then multiply it with n to get the final volume 5 bars let all of them do and then we'll go ahead need you able to do first find out the volume of one chocolate bar the top one then in question number two it's just like big dairy milk and small dairy milk they first asked you to find out the family size dairy milk then they're asking you the short ones to find out how many short ones are there in one big bar Kirtan clear or not Second question, Sasra. Second question clear? Okay, let's go to the third one. Do you know how to calculate time period? Time period is equal to time period means number of oscillations per un per second. Write down. Write down the formula. Time period is time taken to complete one oscillation. Time period is time taken to complete one oscillation. What is oscillation? 1, 2 and 1 fro. Are you familiar with that? Yeah. Time taken. Look at me. Look at me. This is the pendulum. I took it here and I released it. 1, 2, 1 fro. The time that you took to do 1, 2, 1 fro. Now look at this. Before answering the question, look at me. Suppose this experiment was given to me. Find the time period of this pendulum. Means they are asking me to tell them what is the time taken to complete one oscillation. Any human being cannot be able to watch one and immediately lock the time. It's impossible. So this experiment is generally given to 
two children. Like say me and Dhruv we will conduct. Dhruv will have a stopwatch in his hand and I will be the counter in this exam experiment. So what I do? I will take it here and I will tell Dhruv, Dhruv start one, two, three. And as I release he also starts his stopwatch. One, two, three, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Stop. He stops. How many oscillations we recorded for? Thirty. Thirty oscillations and say the time taken was six seconds. What is the time period now? Thirty divided by six, which is around five seconds. This experiment we will do three times. Time taken for one oscillation. So for one or six divided by thirty. Sorry, six divided by thirty. So we will repeat it now for three observations. Then we will take the mean of that observation. That is the most accurate way of representing the time period. This is how experiments are done. Then they will ask us what are the sources of error. One is instead of this release, if the stopwatch could have been controlled immediately, if the synchronization is not there, I say Dhruv release. Ah ha 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 ha. By that time. He already here one error. Next is how do I know I have the more it comes here, it should be stopped. Maybe it just came here and I said stop. While releasing the pendulum, the string was not straight. I released it something like from with a jerk, I released it. Those can be error. Stop watch is not accurate. That can be an error. Have you understood? So let's do this problem. Pendulum makes 10 complete oscillations. Time period is the time taken for one oscillation. So for 10 oscillations, it is taking 8 seconds. For one oscillation, it will take 8 by 10. Clear? You will be able to do it. See, these are two marks, all exam type questions. Okay, next one, a pile of 60 sheets of paper is 6 mm high, calculate the average thickness of a sheet of paper. Now how should you answer this, out here the answer will come, do it, let's see the answer. Pile is 6 mm for 60, right? For 60 it is 6. So average. Average means for 1 how much it should be. 6 by 60. 0 0.1. Huh. 60 ke liye 6. 8 ke liye 6 by 60. Now the question is this, this particular answer came very nicely in 0 0.1. Had this answer come in 0 0.132 what how will you give your answer? That is where significant knowledge comes. Now ask yourself, they gave us the measurement in mm. That means the scale that they are using can measure up to 1 mm. Your answer should always be in the significant figures in which the data is provided. What is the data provided to you in one significant figure? So if your answer was 0 point, let I am giving you the answer, just write the figure. Let us say the average thickness came 0 0.173. 0 0.173. How will you report your answer? That is my question. 0 0.2. 0 0.2. Because one significant figure matlab kya hai? You, it's at, where is the, where did you write 0 0.173? You just wrote. Right. This is your first significant figure. And you are supposed to round it first. So you look at the next one. That's the decider. Decider 5 se upar hai. So take it up by 2. 0 0.2. Suppose they ask you, multiply 3.2 with 3.26, write down 3.26, just write down, then you will become clear. 3.26 and use your calculator, multiply it with 1.1. Get me the answer on your calculator, whatever it is. You, you want a calculator, I can give you. Uh, write down 3.586. That is not important. Question is, how will you report this answer? Here you will report it in the significant figure of the shortest one that was there in the participating question. 
सो टू सिग्निफिकेंट फिगर्स यू शुड रिपोर्ट करो इसको टू में कन्वर्ट करो थ्री पॉइंट सिक्स बिकॉज द थर्ड सिग्निफिकेंट अभी अभी क्लियर हो रहा है सी समथिंग वी लर्न एंड दिस इज एक्चुअल प्रैक्टिस समटाइम्स दे मेट गिव यू द लेंथ इन थ्री सिग्निफिकेंट फिगर्स लाइक फाइव पॉइंट फोर सिक्स इज द लेंथ ऑफ दिस टेबल मल्टीप्लाइड बाई द ब्रेथ विच इज वन पॉइंट टू योर आंसर शुड बी इन टू सिग्निफिकेंट फिगर्स हैव यू अंडरस्टूड ओके नाउ आई गिव यू अ क्वेश्चन थर्टी टू मल्टीप्लाइड बाई ऐसे लिखना थर्टी टू मल्टीप्लाइड बाई टेन हाँ आंसर चाहिए मेरे को थर्टी टू मल्टीप्लाइड बाई टेन थ्री ट्वेंटी रॉन्ग है थ्री हंड्रेड करेक्ट है थर्टी टू एंड टेन वॉट इज द सिग्निफिकेंट फिगर इन थर्टी टू नहीं नहीं इधर देखिए मुझे देखो लुक एट मी ओनली वॉट इज द सिग्निफिकेंट फिगर इन थर्टी टू हाउ मेनी सिग्निफिकेंट फिगर्स टू टेन में कितने सिग्निफिकेंट फिगर्स है वन तो आपका आंसर कितने सिग्निफिकेंट फिगर्स में आना चाहिए वन सी सेट थ्री हंड्रेड नाउ आस्क योर सेल्फ इज थ्री हंड्रेड वन सिग्निफिकेंट फिगर ये थ्री फॉलोड बाई टू जीरो टू जीरो नो वैल्यू बट इफ शी वुड से थ्री हंड्रेड पॉइंट शी गेट्स अ लड्डू थ्री हंड्रेड पॉइंट मीन्स थ्री सिग्निफिकेंट फिगर्स आर यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग वन मोर क्वेश्चन टेक इट जस्ट राइट लाइक ए क्वेश्चन यूज योर कैलकुलेटर एंड फाइंड इट जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू फोर एट वन मल्टीप्लाइड बाई जीरो पॉइंट थ्री जीरो वन ध्रुव ऐसे लिखना बच्चे जैसे मल्टीप्लाई लिखते हैं वैसे लिखना है लैंग्वेज क्यों लिख रहा है यू आर मिसिंग द क्रक्स ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम मैं भी भूल जाता हूं आई गिव इट फ्रॉम माई माइंड एनी वन डिड यू कॉपी द नंबर्स करेक्टली हाँ हाँ इसका आंसर चाहिए एंड आंसर मी लाइक अ स्टूडेंट ऑफ a laboratory not a student of grade 8 for me you are all checkpoint passed pehle answer ko likh jo bhi calculator batata hai ab socho answer kaise declare karoge kitan did you get the calculator figure now you see how you will declare your answer so what is the step nidhi look at the two participating numbers whom you have multiplied nahi dro pehle dekh main bol raha hu isko dekhte bhul jayega look at the two participating numbers write down the two participating numbers just write down the two participating numbers i ah uh, uh, it may be correct just hold on sasra ha write down the two participating numbers and write down the other participating number now write down write a column here sig fig right sig fig sig fig significant figure yahan yahan likho yahan sig fig likho sig fig here 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 right sig fig now write down okay see i have made him write like this children see pardon me my leg was i have made him write like this the two participating numbers and i have made him write a sig fig now write the sig figs that you watch for this number and this number then we'll understand well dash likho dash no no not equal to you write what how many sig figs you watch for this number then i'll understand you have understood or not okay can you tell me the two numbers chal na bata karta hu 0.0248 another number was 0.301 you multiplied them in calculator what is the value you got uh, 0.0074 746 781 this is the answer that you have got now look at this number and i am writing sig fig let's see what is the sig fig how many sig figs are are no one answers this answer will be given only by dhruv first dhruv kitne sig figs hai isme you may be wrong koi baat nahi Dhruv says four sig fig. Nidhi, you four. Don't think I am asking someone else. Means all of you are correct. Sasha, how many sig figs you see here? Kirtan, why do you see four, Kirtan? The first way to identify is the first significant figure. The first significant figure is the first number that you see in any number. 
what is the first number that you see? 2. After that, how many numbers are there? 3. So, 4 significant figures. After the decimal point between two numbers, then that 0 has got a value. Here, 0 does not have a value. So, these doubts are very evident to come. These doubts cannot be cleared by just writing the rules. Do you understand? Kirtan, this 0 has got a value. This 0 does not have a value. After decimal, between two numbers or after 0 0.30, this 0 has a value. This 0 is a value. 0 0.0030 and the value in the value are understood clear chalo ajo so how many sig figs okay uh, nidhi bottom one how many sig figs three so this is four sig figs this is three sig figs abdru bolo jo answer aega we should represent it in how many sig figs why that's the lower one all of you clear with it Clear so Musan not angry on me. No? Don't be angry. So now we need to get it into three sig figs. Chal, Ruv, you will only convert it into three sig figs. Chalo. Three sig figs. Huh? Galat ho sakta hai na? Hmm. Three sig figs. Sabse pehle, how, now you have to do some cutting shutting you have to do. What is the first sig fig here? Why? The first number is always the first sig fig. First sig fig, second sig fig, third sig fig. Clear? Are who is not clear out here? Tell me. First, second, third. Now we have to truncate our answer out here. Matlab, the answer will get truncated here. But this number is known as the decider. What is the value of the decider? 5 or above 5. So we report our answer as 0 0.00747. That's the answer. Now many children will say, sir, these are not important. Na? So I wrote the answer, Array. how can you change the product value? This is a very small number. You made it very big. Ye nahi kar sakte. When I used to first run significant figures, I used to think that no, it is not significant. This is no, 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 no. You don't have the right to change the value. You have right only to amend to the value. One more shall we do? One more. Okay, take down. Okay, now I will not give from mine because if I give from mine, it changes up. Okay. 0 0.0020605 divided by 0 0.1000. I want the answer. Okay. And please do it in this way 0 0.00. 20605 okay and 0.1000 first write what are the sig figs you observe do it De, kirtan this one any calculator for an idiot will also do this that you need not worry our job is to first find out the sig fig how many sig figs here you tell me kirtan how many how many starting from where ending how many Okay, Rendu, Boro, Nalgo, Aido, five six figs. How many six figs here? Uh, why? Nidhi, how many six figs here? One. Uh, Sasra, how many six figs here? Four. Nidhi, it's not one. Not okay. You should understand that this device is an extremely precise device, can give you measurement up to four signal. Look at me. Could I not have written as 0 0.1? Am I an idiot that I wrote it like this? No. My measuring device is extremely efficient. It can measure up to four digits. We don't have values. So, how many sig figs here? Four. Answer should be given in how many sig figs? Four. Now, do this division on calculator. Hey, you are just dividing it with 0.1. So, if you divide it with 0.1, means what? What can this be written as? 2.0605. 10 to the power how much? Minus 3. This is being divided by 10 to the power minus 1. That means minus of minus 1. So it becomes 
10 to the power minus 2 finally. So make it 10 to the power minus 2. This number can be written as 10 to the power minus 2. Minus 2 means 0 0.020605. This is the answer after division. Your calculator also should show the same thing. Are you getting this value? After calculator. Now we have to answer it in 4 sig figs. Nidhi, you will do this. Get me in 4 sig figs. Which is the first sig fig you see? 2. Why not this? The first number is the first sig fig. First sig fig. This one? 0, yeah? So, it's between two words. Second. Third. Fourth sig fig. So, we have to truncate our answer here. Who is the decider? 5. So, what do we do? Increase this by 1. Zero point zero two zero seven. Oh, no, four six figs, right? One, one, two, three, four. Yeah, zero point zero two zero six one. Four six figs. Okay. Say, for example, this answer would have come zero point zero two zero six nine five. What and give it? Give the answer in four six figs. Ab isko four six figs karo. Hmm. Increment this by 1 means this value also goes up by 1. So, in that case, this number will be 0 0.02070. Are you clear now? Shall I take one problem from the book in sig figs? Okay, let's see whether we are able to do sig figs from the book or not. Okay, at home you will complete this exercise, all these. Then we will go into, we into our real physics. Okay, let's go to the sig fig exercise. Don't look at the watch. Okay. These I have little bit jumped. I think this is time pass. Cube, area, triangle. If you don't know this, then don't sit in the checkpoint. When as simple as that. Okay. Come to page number four. Will you be able to do these questions? Test yourself. How many millimeters are there in one centimeter? Sasa, dekho. Will you be able to do? Write as powers of 10. Write these fractions as power of 10. Can you do question number 4? Question number 4, part 3 or part 2. 7 divided by 100,000, which we call 1 lakh. But you children are doing it in international. Aap log 1 lakh nahi jante. 100,000. Did you get it, Kirtan? Page number 4, page yeah, number, uh, yeah, question number 4, A, part 2, show this as a power of 10, 7 divided by 1 lakh, it's like this, see, 7 divided by 100,000, show it as a power of 10, let's do it, 7 can be written as 7 into 10 to the power 0 in 7 into 1. This item is getting divided by what? 1 into 10 to the power how much? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Agreed? Multiply 7 and 1, 7. And then into 10 to the power 0 plus 5. So, oh, this is a division, sorry. 0 minus 5. So, it is 7 into 10 to the power minus 5. Are we fine? Can you bring it back to decimal notation now? 7 into 10 to the power minus 5. So, write 7. 7 means the point is lying here. The point will, ex these are all say spaces. The point will climb how many? 5 spaces to the left. 1 space, 2 space, 3 space, 4 space, 5 space. So, the point is here. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. This is the decimal representation. Here. Where did that sig fig exercise go? There was a small sig fig exercise. Also.
Hell. Oh, I think it is in the maths book you have that, not here. Anyways, next class when we do maths, we have significant figures there also. So, the same thing, we will do calculation there. I don't see significant figures here. We have it in our maths class. So, we will wait there. Fine then, this chapter we can conclude and your actual physics starts from next chapter. Are you fine? Was this very tough? So, by the time we do our next chapter, you all will be checkpoint all attempted kids. So, I tried to keep it and then again children, your checkpoint is on priority. I neither will scold you nor will I be angry if you have not been able to do this. But my request is, if after doing checkpoint problems you feel bored up, you can take one or two problems from here and do, but not a hard and fast rule. Till your checkpoint, checkpoint is priority. Okay, we will go slow. But once checkpoint ends, like a metro train, we will tuck, 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 will increase our speed. Achha, a small question, uh, thing which I did not see.